We're making some more spirits. This is our review of distilled cask drink. Cast Strength is a mini expansion to the hit board game Distilled, and I felt really unlucky with the new dynamic market. The new elements add some fun dynamics to an already great game. We'll tell you all about it after this quick how to play. The rules for the game are pretty much the same except for these new elements. The expansion adds more upgrade cards to the deck with new abilities. There are new premium ingredients that will add bonus abilities when played in Spirits. There are new special flavors that allow a player to exchange a flavor card. And the biggest change comes to the dynamic market cards that will add some variety to the marketplace. We were sent a copy of Cast Strength from the publisher so that we could do this review video. If you'd like to find out more information or buy a copy, check out the links in the description below. Distilled was one of my favorite games of 2023. I still really enjoy playing it. And once we were talking with Dave Beck at PAX Unplugged and he told us all about the Cast Strength expansion, I was really excited because he was talking about the dynamic market cards, how you're gonna have these cards that will change up the marketplace a little bit, add some variety. So I was really looking forward to that. However, when we actually started playing, the element that I liked most are the new premium ingredients with the bonus abilities on them. When you add them to your spirit, you can activate these abilities. They'll either give you more money or more points, things like that. I think these are my new favorite element in the whole expansion. Yeah, when we were talking to Dave back at PAX Unplug, I also was really excited about the dynamic market. The, the whole dynamic part of it sounded cool. But then as I was playing, I just felt really unlucky. It was just like every time I wanted to do something, the dynamic market made everything harder for me to do it. So I'm like, ah, okay, how do I pivot? And then the next one came out. So when I tried to pivot, ah, I, it messed me up again. For the most part, I had the opposite experience when I was playing the different games that we had with the expansion. So the dynamic market card looks like this. And on the dynamic market card, it's gonna add a dollar cost to certain elements or subtract a dollar cost to certain elements and give you extra money if you distill a spirit from certain regions. And with the dynamic market cards, you see what's gonna be available the next round. So I would see that, okay, I wanna make a fruit spirit, but next round it's gonna cost less. So I'll plan to do that next round. And if I distill a spirit from one of these regions, I'll get extra money. Well, I need that extra money so that the next round I can spend more and get even more stuff and do even more. So I liked looking at that ahead of time and planning for the next round. I didn't let it surprise me. And with that being said, yeah, I felt unlucky, but you're right. It was, it's cause I wasn't looking ahead. I mean, but even then, like it was more of a minor inconvenience, not looking ahead. Like it didn't just completely like, ruin the game for me. So, I mean, it was still fun seeing the change, especially if you've played Distilled, you know, a bunch of times like we've played it. The game also adds four new upgrade cards and I like them, but they're not the ones that I would normally go after in a game. I think we went after them while we were playing just to see how they played, how they worked. But now that we know, I like if, I, if these came up in a normal game, I'd be like, Meh, I don't, I don't really need those ones. I, I'd rather go after a different strategy. Yeah, that's usually my move. Whenever we get expansions, it's always like, oh, they must be new or good for a reason. Let's go after them. But then five times out of 10, you're always just like, meh. The new flavor cards, when you have it in one of your age spirits and then you pull it up, it allows you to exchange one of your other flavors that you draw because it's supposed to be random. When you age, you just take the card off the top and then put it in. You don't know what it is. So if you flip, flip it over, it could be skunk beetle or it could be really bad flavor. So this one lets you change it out and you can press your luck and you can draw a card. And this actually helped me. It gave me an extra point because it gave me extra money for distilling that one. And I was able to use that money in the next round to then get things that I needed to get me extra points and really help me out. So these cards help me out. There's only four of them. I would have liked to have more of these but I feel like you could like house rule this and just use that as a normal ability in any of the flavors or any of like a certain number of flavors or the blank ones that you get in the base deck that, that, that kind of stuff I think you could house rule this to really get more of these cards I would like to have more than four of these so regarding the new premium ingredients I could see why you like it because you can get a bit more points some more coin with it but I don't know I don't know if it added too much but yeah, I don't know. I think it changes the way that you can look at the market while you're playing. So the original premium ingredients in the base game, they don't have any abilities in that blank section. It's just blank space on the card, which is already, you don't like blank space on the card. So if you compare the two cards, so blank space on the card is the original, and then these new ones have a bonus ability. So for the corn, when selling, gain one extra point for each other grain alcohol included in your spirit that you're distilling. So if I had this and then I had three other uh, grains in there for a max of three, I can get three more points. 
In the base game, if I wanted to get four points from a spirit with that, I'd have to have this card, which gives me the two, and I have to have two copies of it or some other grain that would give me the points down at the bottom. Whereas this card, I could just have the one and get the two other basic grains and then have that. So I can think about how I wanna spend my money. Instead of having to buy two premium ingredients, I already have the basics, I can use this, and then I can get something else. So I can think about how my strategy is gonna change and use that money in the market in a better way rather than just buying all these premium ingredients to try to get the points. The money ones are a little less powerful, I think, because you can get money or you can get discounts, things like that. But I do like how it adds some variety to the premium ingredients when you're going after them. You're not just looking at what's the ingredient, what's the cost, you're also thinking, okay, what's the ingredient, what's the cost, and what bonus ability do I get from that premium ingredient? So I think lesson learned for me, and I guess it should have been obvious, look at what's coming up in the dynamic market and go after those premium ingredients. I'll do that next time. One of the modifications that suggests in the rule book of the expansion is you can mix in the premium ingredients. So it's not all premium ingredients. So you can have a mixture of two so that when those premium ingredients do come up, everyone will be like, oh, that one says something. Let me like look at it. When they all are premium and they have abilities, maybe it kind of gets lost in the, in the static kind of a thing. You're like, oh, they're all gonna do something. I'll figure out what happens once I get it. Whereas when you have one and the other ones don't have any abilities, then you might be like, Ooh, what's that do? Like that could be a way to kind of get everyone to pinpoint on it a little bit more maybe. What are those words? <laughs> <laughs> I think basically just cause it's just new stuff. We played it a lot in 2023, so it just mixes it up. So new. I agree. I just like all the new stuff and it kind of goes into my dislike. I dislike that there's not more st new stuff. I know that it's a mini expansion. I feel like I didn't really need these for upgrades. I would have liked something a little bit better than these, but for the most part, I just like that it's new and I wish there was more new stuff, but I understand it's only a mini expansion. So I'm just happy that we got some new distill. What did you not like about it? So, I mean, it's not any flaw in the expansion, but it's just the dynamic market playing it the first couple times. I think I just had a lot of things going on as always when playing distilled. So I didn't pay too close of attention and it really, it really bit me in the end. Overall, with all the new components, I did have fun. I still think I need to play it a little bit more to really enjoy it. So I'm probably gonna give it an eight. Overall, I love this game. In our review of the base game, I gave it a nine. You can check that out in our link in the description below. I don't think that this adds anything that makes it higher than a nine. In my original review, I talked about a couple tweaks that this could have made to make it even better. I don't think any of these address those things that I had talked about, but I do really like all the new stuff. So it's still a nine. Now with our review of Distilled, Cast Strength. What'd you think? Is this board game worth another sip? Let us know in the comments below. Once again, we'd like to thank the publishers for sending us a copy so that we could do this review video. If you'd like to find out more information or buy a copy, check out the links in our description below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny. We go party like a board gamer.